Welcome to Through the Hair with the Long-Haired Freaky Dude. Today we're going to discuss the actions of those in response to the shooting of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. On August 9th, 2014, a young man by the name of Michael Brown was shot and killed by Officer Darren Wilson, who was white. This fact is undisputed by both parties, and this shall be the only fact that we work with today. We will not assume whether or not Darren Wilson had the right to shoot Michael Brown, but merely accept that he was shot and that he was killed. This fact, along with the assumption that Darren Wilson did not have the right to shoot Michael Brown, has sparked anger in both residents of Ferguson, Missouri, as well as people abroad who feel for Michael Brown and his family. These people have every right to be angry. In fact, hearing this story makes me angry as well. Anytime a man is shot and killed, we all have the right to be angry, whatever the circumstances. No man deserves to have his life taken from him by another man. Now, sometimes people will make poor choices which lead them to be killed out of self-defense. Taking a life to save a life. The complex morals of doing such an act shall be left for another video. But I do declare that it is one's human right to do whatever is necessary to defend themselves. Was Michael Brown killed out of self-defense? That is indeed a serious question, and one which only Darren Wilson and the jurors of the case can honestly answer. But not one which I think is important to this topic. Michael Brown was killed and people therefore have the right to be angry and to protest, even if the killing was just. That's why the fact really doesn't matter. But I submit that the protesters' anger does not stem entirely from Michael Brown being killed, but rather from a large building pressure cooker filled with numerous and repeated abuses by police officers abroad. Day after day, we see articles in the news about police officers who unjustly shoot people, who torment citizens without warrant, who harass homeless people, who are racist and prejudiced, and who shoot and kill people's dogs with foul reason. These stories infuriate people, and do indeed create much anger and tension which builds up over time. It was all going to pour out sooner or later. And I think it just so happens that Michael Brown was our snapping point. We finally want something to get done about it. There have been too many abuses by police officers. Yes, something does need to get done, indeed. But the way some protesters have gone about doing it is not the way. Some protesters have looted stores, injured citizens, caused car crashes, and disrupted public events all in the name of Michael Brown's cause, which we shall here on out refer to as the distaste of police violence and prejudice. Yes, something needs to get done, but I beg of you, this is not the way to go about doing it. We are not the better if we try to fight violence with more violence. And even more so, our cause is diluted when we take our anger out on that which was not the cause of our anger. The root of our anger comes from this violence of police. But I ask you not to be angry at the police. Not all police are violent. Not all police are mean. Not all police are prejudiced or racist. In fact, a majority of police officers are very nice and law-abiding. They are vessels of the law and carry out whatever orders or interpretation of the orders they are given. What we need to be angry at is the source of power which grants them the freedom to be violent. The reason some officers misbehave is oftentimes because they think that what they are doing is okay or that they won't be caught or punished for it. We need to be angry at the people who let them get away with these things. We need to direct our lenient laws we need to direct it at the lenient laws, which will allow some of these officers to get away with what they do. Sure, the officers themselves can be taken to court, but that does not solve the problem. Officers will continue to act up. 
let's use a typical gun argument here. It's not entirely the gun's fault someone was killed. Likewise, it's not entirely the officer's fault that someone was killed. The real reason someone was hurt was because of the man wielding the gun. The real reason a man was hurt was because of the man wielding the officer. Now, I'm not even talking about the sheriff here. I'm talking about legislation. The police is a public entity, meaning that they are ultimately governed by we the people. They are not a private establishment. What we need to do, what we need to take our anger out on, is ourselves. We need to focus this anger, not into hurting others, but into propelling ourselves forward to get something done, to making the world better, not worse. We need to get active in our communities. We need to set examples, propose laws, get educated in political affairs. Surely we should not enjoy dabbling in political affairs, but we must nonetheless become politically active if we want people who think they are bigger than us to stop bullying us. If you want something done, run for office, propose changes, establish new guidelines for police officers, one which shows them who really has the power. Oftentimes, I think the police forget that we the people are in power. They forget that it is us who pays for their income. It is us that puts food on their table. We need to bring cops to recognize this. And I think, then, less officers will be made. <clears throat> Don't bite the hand which feeds you. But this is a two-way street we are dealing with. We can't henceforth become bullies of the cops, for that makes us no better than them. We must learn to coexist and live happily for the cops because sometimes we too forget things. We sometimes forget that it is that uh, that it is them who keeps our family safe, who keeps bad guys off the streets. If we do not provide for the cops, then they will not provide for us. What needs to be done rather than bullying the cops to get what we want out of them, is to teach them who it is that's truly good and truly bad. The job of a cop is to arrest bad people and to take them off the street so that the good people remain safe. What's happening today is that some cops' vision of who is good and bad has become diluted. They are starting to apprehend good people and they are ignoring the bad people. They are becoming careless in their job, and sometimes they hurt good people along the way of apprehending bad people. What we need to do is simply show them what they are doing is not what we paid them to do. The police is, in essence, a business, and it should function like one. They aren't doing what we want them to do. Stop paying for them. They will come around and get their act together. I beg of you, let's stop hurting innocent bystanders and businesses here. Let's stop abusing the cops which are truly good. Let's stop forgetting that the police, though violent as some have become, still play a very important role in keeping crime down. Albeit, crime is very high in St. Louis as a result of a somewhat corrupt police force, but let's not try to solve this problem with more crime. That just worsens the problem. That makes us hypocritical. Get out there and become a part of the community, the police force, the elected officials. Do good. Set examples so others will follow. Let's be a lone flower in this world of darkness, and surely from us more will spring. It will be hard to live at first. We will be threatened, ridiculed, abused by both parties. We will be hated by cops and protesters alike who feel the only way to solve things is through violence. But over time, people will start to see our beauty, and they will take to peacefully resolving this matter at hand. They will join us in our cause. This message is not just directed at protesters who vandalized. This is directed at the police force as a whole, but not, not individual officers, but rather those who have handled this matter rather poorly. When protesters decided it would be a good idea to break the law, police sat back, idly, as harmless businesses were pillaged. It was, indeed, a very dangerous situation for the cops to pursue, but they could have done more than just sit back and watch the city burn. And then, later, 
when there came to be protesters who took to the streets and were otherwise peaceful, at the very least, more peaceful than those who looted the businesses, those are the people the cops decided to pursue in riot gear and with tear gas. Those are the people they arrested. Perhaps some of those protesters were bad. Perhaps some of them were acting up. Perhaps some deserved to be arrested. But gassing the entire crowd with tear gas when they aren't harming anyone? That was a very poor choice, in my opinion. Only escalating the tension betwixt the people and the police. Where was this tear gas when people were actually destroying things? Again, they've started to pursue the good and are now ignoring the bad. As the great Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said, what we should not concern ourselves with is uh, we should not concern ourselves with winning, for winning only creates losers. For us as losers, to try to come back and win only puts people in the same position we were fighting so hard to come out of. We don't want to swap positions here. What we need is King begged of us. What we need is reconciliation. Our goal is to create a beloved community, and that will require a qualitative change in our souls, as well as a quantitative change in our hearts, in our lives. We need to stop trying to be better than others. Stop trying to empower ourselves over, over others as a means of revenge for those who used to control us. We just need to learn to all live together and coexist. We need to devise a plan in which we can all agree upon and live happily with. And we shan't stop changing and shan't stop moving forward until we finally have created a place where there is no more tension between parties and people. Some think that day will never come, and such a society can never exist. Perhaps they're right, but I say that we should not stop until we've tried every possible way of living. If in the end, there is no way for everyone to live happily and peacefully together, then I suppose we'll just have to settle with the best of society's evils. But I'm going to be optimistic and say that as long as we keep moving forward, we won't have to settle for something close enough. To the protesters, I beg of you, when the verdict of Michael Brown's case is released, be angry about it, but use that anger to better yourself and society. Fight the source of that anger with your mind, not with fists and guns and molt of cocktails. Please do not start more violence and crime. To the cops, I beg of you, stop abusing power. Take time to consider of it who you are pursuing, if they are really bad, or if you are accidentally hurting good people along the way to capture the bad people. Come together, guys. Let's live with people we may disagree with. Let's reconcile. Let's not fight to win. Let's fight to exist together, all of us, even those we hate.